in April 1994, I was hooded as a postulant. I came back. My mother made this breadfruit. You know now, it's only her. She has many to sell, but no market. So when I came, I saw the pains in her eyes. I don't know whether a sister can wear the sister clothes that is a beginner and sell. So I went and told the superior, please, my mother hope and is finding it difficult. During this my holiday, can I help her? She looked at me and said, she has never been faced with such a thing. But remove your clothes, go and sell for her. After selling, you can come back. That was what I did. So my mom enjoyed my holiday. I removed the tunic, call it tunic, and hawk for my mom throughout that week. I did my first profession in Omoahia. By then, everybody has accepted it. They sent me to Okigwe to work as in a school with a sister that is managing a secondary school. When I went there, the bishop of the Okigwe Diocese, Bishop Anthony Elon, felt that he can confine me. I can imagine at that tender age, he made me his confidential secretary, which I, I did I, because <laughs> for four years, the fifth year I was transferred. So being his uh, confidential secretary, I know that and started nurturing me into liking to become a sister because I'm planning the day I will still leave the sisterhood. But, you know, working with elderly people, you know, seeing the sincerity, I started, you know, convincing myself that maybe I have this um, calling. And all my achievements in life, I think I'm attributing it to that man. Because every day, he will bless me. Whenever I come in the morning, he will say that it will be well with you. you have, I didn't know, every day, in the, when I finish my work in the evening, he will also bless me. Out of sympathy for the man, I have accepted to go and study secretarial study so that I will be fit for the, for the job. But when they now removed me, he traveled to Rome before he could be back. They have already removed You know, you have no, no, no right to ask why because we, we normally take three vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. So I was sent to Umulobo Obo. It was when he came back, he in Imo State, still in, still in his diocese. So he has to come there to collect his key and his document. Now, it, I was sent to a hospital. So mother said, why not write JAMB? I said, mother, I want to write for chemical engineering. He said, no, write for medicine. You're not in the hospital, but if you can make it, you now go for chemical engineering. As God will have it, I wrote my JAMB. That was the JAMB of 2001, 2002. I scored 265. I got married. So getting that, getting that admission told me that God wanted me, want me to be a medical doctor. The only thing is, God, how will I overcome the hurdle of blood? How it disappeared, I don't know. Immediately I gained that admission, the same superior general called me. Because the one that wanted me to go for that one, that said that this is what my teacher said, is no longer in charge. I told her that I got admission, got admission. they said that it's married, that I'm not paying anything. He said, no, you will not study medicine. Go and change it to chemistry. I want you to study chemistry education. I thought it's maybe that's what my congregation, because our vow of obedience supersedes everything. I now went to Namdaziki Wei University. I met one Mr. Abone. He's the one in charge of student affairs to do change of course from medicine to chemistry. He looked at me. He's an elderly man. He said he had been in this office for, by that time, 20 something years. He have never seen the people. The only people changing are the people that are not qualified. I said, no, my superior general said that they need, that I would do very well as in chemistry. And innocently, I thought that's what we need. He, ha he knew the, this previous mother that wanted me to study medicine. He now called her. The mother said I should come. When I came, he said, you know one thing? Don't change. If it's the will of God, they will not expel you. Because whenever they found out that you did not change, they might expel you. But if it's the will of God, nobody will expel you. But if it's not the will of God, even if they expel you, being a sister is not the main thing, but going to heaven. I feel that you will do better as a, as a medical doctor. In the man and that superior general, they, they donated a lot of things to make sure that because I can't go back to ask for my fee. 
So I was nervous. My mother took me to her barn in Okode and said I should dig this place. There was something making noise. It was a, a container of uh, this pig meal, empty pig meal. So I should bring it. When I brought it out, my mother saved 100,000 inside it. This thing was happening on the 14th of January, 2002. He said, I heard your cry. Because whenever we are saying our prayer together, I will be saying, God, I wish I could have a room to myself. But they said that the room is 50,000 as of that 2002. She gave me the money, my sweet mom. I have already finished paying have that balance of 50,000. Before that, my superior general, the former superior general, and that Mr. Bonnet gave me money, so which completed that my mother's money to 100,000 back. I brought it back, he said no. She said no, that I should take it. I took it because I don't want to have it, but I took it even though I did not spend it. I tried, gradually I was giving it back to her, but she didn't know it was that money I was giving back to her. So I went into Namda Zikiwe. But I had the problem of mixing up. When I, because whenever I'm, as I say, I'm doing chemistry, but I'm so scared. I live my three years in fear because I still need to do my final vow. You know, it's after your final vow that you can say that you are now okay. So the fear keeps me hiding until during the time for my final vow. But they didn't know that I'm not studying the chemistry. But that my superior general said, go my daughter. Even if you are expelled, you didn't do anything wrong. I know that the church needs a doctor, and I need somebody like you to be a doctor. We normally say three months end of praying, so after that the mother will come and certify that you do your final vow. I said, I don't want to have this fear and these lies and do my final vow. I will tell her, it's either she expels me or she accepts me. When I told mother, Mother, I disobeyed you. I knelt down crying. I said, I disobeyed you. But it was beyond me. Mother, I'm studying medicine. I'm not studying the chemistry. I expected her to say, why? I need this chemistry. You say, good. Immediately she said, good. I continued. I did my final vow. My fifth year in the medical school, I was among the best. That year at our time. So they sent us to US for six months. That was 2007. I studied in New Brooklyn, New York Methodist Hospital, Brooklyn, and New York University Hospital, free of charge, sponsored by the federal government. When I finished, I did very well. They wanted to return us. But unfortunately, by then, that mother that I had has finished, another mother is now in. When I told her that these people want to return me, she said, I didn't send you to US. I sent you to Nanda Zivuwe in Oka. I said, okay, I have to come. I came back because then it was our fifth year. We have not done our final MB. So I came back and switched off. I didn't want to continue again with them because I wanted initially to go into emergency medicine, which is not being done in Nigeria. So that was how I came back here. But when we came back and went to have a presidential handshake, I told President Yaradua, please, sir, this hospital you show us, that's National Hospital Abuja. I like it. It looks like the hospital we, you trained us in uh, Brooklyn. Can you allow us to work there if we, so if we get the admission to, if you pass to do the, our house job? They said, of course. I said, no, I heard that you must know somebody. He said, no. He asked somebody to take our one because we are five. He said, any of these people, children that pass, nobody should tamper with it. But the only thing I cannot guarantee you, you must pass so that you go there and distinguish yourself. So she prom he promised us and then blessed us, we went back. When we finished our house job, all of them went back to the state. All of them are in the state now. But I'm the only one that did not go back. But I'm happy I did not go because I'm also happy. So when I finished my house job at National Hospital Abuja, they liked my service and they returned me. I told them I want to study emergency medicine. Unfortunately, even though it's not in Nigeria, they promised me that they would train me. They sent me to United Kingdom and train me just to have a certificate, uh, certification in uh, emergency medicine. 25th December 2011, there was Madala bomb blast. 2011, 25th December. And because I'm working in emergency there, 
I have finished my call because I did nine, uh, nine a call that's supposed to end by eight on 25th of that month. I called the person to hand over. She said she's around, I should go. When I wanted to leave, the security man told me, sister, they said they bomb bo. Before I could wait, I saw vehicle carrying corpses. Corpses came first. You know, we see some leg, but you know, just, you know how they bomb blast victim before they then brought other people. I was the only medical doctor from that 8.15 they came till around to 3. I was the only medical I used the, how, the cleaners, security, you know, was, because there were many. So, you know, in, on December, usually there is no patient. So, I'm sure all of them have sneaked to go and attend one thing or the other. That's why I didn't have it against anybody. So, around that kind to 3. Some people now came, that was better. At least we were able to put line for all of them. Many of them, we put line, sent for history and all those things. So that was how we attended to them. I left the door. I slept in the hospital because I have to leave on Easter, 26th uh, December evening. That was when I left the work. I came on 24th. And you know that 26th is also public holiday. So people have booked a lot of things. So I know that they don't have enough, so I was there. But finally, God helped. There was no body that was alive that was brought to National Hospital for that 2011 Madela bomb blast that died. All of them survived. When I was working in emergency in 2012, there is somebody, one prominent man, and in the, in the, a Muslim, that the son had accident, very fatal accident, has spinal cord injury, has brain injury, and all those ones. So when I came, because you know we normally do two days off. When I came, that's the third day of the boy. So I was trying to give them encouragement to, you know, they shouldn't lose hope because the mother is an Egyptian, but the father is a Muslim from Brno. So they were losing hope. So when I asked them to go and buy medication, they would be delaying. I didn't know that some, maybe they have told them that the chances are slim. So I have to cough out small money to go and buy the drugs so that later I will ask them to give me back my money because I needed that the fever was so much so I have to buy Rosuphine instead of the other brand that is not really good. I bought two bottles and helped them. I didn't know that that's sinking rich because the way the woman, you know, you know the Muslims, Egyptian, the way she was squatted so I thought that they don't have it. So after some time the boy started re responding that we have to take the boy to ICU intensive care unit and then, before you know it, the boy started picking up that he was strong enough to be taken to Cairo, Egypt, where the, where the mother came from. So after that, the boy survived, was in a wheelchair for years, but finally, I don't know how it... So the man now came back, sorry, went home and told the story of how a woman, that is a Christian, helped and all those ones, that he wanted to reward the person. So when she came back and told our, the BB show, the Muslim man that did not allow, keep to the, the promises. So he called me and said that there's someone that came that he wants to sponsor me to, to any university of my choice in the world that I attended to his son. I said, I can't remember. So finally I said, we don't take, we can't say yes or no, that he has to talk to our superior general. So the man came, he doesn't like talking to me directly, he will talk to the wife, the wife will not talk to me. So we now call our superior general, this man have to fly down to Omoahe, which is eight, to go and see the superior general. So when they went and saw the superior general, promised to come to Abuja National Hospital to see things himself. By then, his son was still in a um, private room, no longer in ICU. So when he came, even his people now became a prince. Why is it that Christians are coming too close to this day? You know, all their big people will see their plenty of people following them around. So when he came, Reluctantly, my superior now allowed, said they can get the university. They asked me, I said, I don't know any school. So the wife now got school for me in UK and then got in um, Germany. I said, since I have done some course in the uh, UK, let me go to Germany. So my school fees then was 16,000 euro. Only school fees for one year. Then my accommodation was 1,200 euro. So in the course of, so the news now spread everywhere and there was a problem. You see, as we are sitting down here, without even doing anything, we can have such talk because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this one, they will carry soap, put, carry the toll, put, carry answer, put. When they finish, they say it's itching them. They perforated the womb. So there were posts everywhere. <laughs> 